Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan. He's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. <sighs> I got to tell you, I don't have time to do this anymore. <laughs> I am really struggling to be able to do this, even the couple of times a week I do it. Anyway, um, there will be an end coming up. Um, probably when I hit 500, I will do like one a week. I don't know. Um, all kinds of chaos breaking out this morning. I sent a package to a person, a bunch of the things in it were broken. A friend's having a crisis with one of their houses they rent. And the worst is that the lawn guy who promised me a whole day can now only do like three hours. And that means I've got to go out there today and do anything that a person can do without help as much as I can before the rain. And when I have to do the radio show at two o'clock. So I am under the gun in a major way. <laughs> So I wanted to really, Danny, there she is, 20, 25 inches of snow. Oh my God. She lives in South Dakota for you guys. <laughs> and they're having that big storm. 25 inches. That's like, we've had that twice in the area since I've lived here um, in New England. It is not common to get that much. When, before I moved here from Berkshire County, we had 25 inches of snow when I had a horse. And he was in an electric fence and the snow was, you know, three feet deep. <laughs> His fence was about a foot high. <laughs> he could just walk out, which he did, and wander around wherever he wanted to go. <sighs> Don't keep livestock in deep snow. It's not pretty. Thanks, Danny. I hope you stay inside and keep those corgis shoveled up. <laughs> that is a lot of snow, even for you guys. Hopefully it melts. So today I really want to talk about this new study because I find it fascinating. And to me, one of the most fascinating things is that um, people researching this know so little about this area, like they didn't ask me, of course, <laughs> that they can't even figure out the discrepancy. So here's the deal. They found that there was a huge difference in happiness reported by dog owners versus cat owners. Now, of course, most households in the United States um, have a cat, like 60% have cats, and uh, like, I don't know, 45% have dogs. And I'm sure my sister knows those right off the top of her head. So they also compared uh, cat owners, dog owners, and people who had dog and a cat. The dog owners were still much happier. Um, two times as many dog owners report that they are very happy as people with um, just a cat or a dog and a cat. So why is this? We look, they, they did rule out things like... Um, Dog owners are indeed slightly happier than those with no pets, and cat people are significantly, usually that's a pretty big level of statistics, less happy than people with uh, no dogs and people with dogs and cats. Um, so they said, well, dog owners are more likely to be married and own their own home. Maybe that's why they're happier. Um, cat owners, let's see. Um, I can't read what I wrote here. I, I don't know what that says. Fund Ross. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so cat owners, they gave a bunch of reasons why they might be less happy. Um, dog owners as a group are more agreeable and generally more extroverted than cat owners. And in fact, I have a lot of qualities of cat people. I'm very attractive to the cat people and the kitties. Um, there is the idea that cats themselves are more neurotic and therefore that kind of person is attracted to them and that kind of person may be less happy. Um, there is that whole idea that dog owners go outside and walk around and are more interactive with fellow dog owners um, and cat owners don't do that. In my area, there's so many cats and so many people that like read books and stay inside because I'm by a bunch of universities that I think there's a ton of cat bonding that goes on at my job for sure. So I'm not sure that that would be the reason. Um, a, a 2015 study found that cat people have also decreased negative emotions, but they don't have an increase in positive emotions. So cat people versus your regular person with no pets um, are less depressed, but they don't have positive emotions to balance that out which I think is a really interesting study. How do they even figure that out? Um, 
that dog owners tend to be uh, more friendly with their neighbors and things because they take their dogs out for walks or because people see the dog in the yard and come up to you and say, oh, my grandma had, you know, a, a chihuahua too. So dog owners have more interaction with other people. Um, another reason they said that dog people um, are happier is because they um, are more like, likely to play with their pet and to go out and do stuff with other people than somebody with cat owners. But a survey in 20, uh, 2006 um, did not find that dog people are more likely to have other friends in their lives. I mean, I, you know, like I said, I work with a bunch of cat ladies. They have a lot more friends than some of the dog ladies. So that's not even a factor. But since they didn't ask me, the major factor was another study that came out like four years ago. And they found that when you're just gazing at your dog, the hormones that, that are a measure of your happiness, serotonin and dopamine, go up a lot just looking at your dog. And if your dog looks back at you, it goes up even further. And the more you look, the more the hormones increase, which the more bonding you have with your dog and the more the dog bonds with you and the happier you are. And these are the hormones that are responsible for happiness. So this study did not, and they should have measure serotonin levels in people and cats and dogs. And in that study about serotonin levels, they could not get that same thing to show in cat people. Cat, cat people were playing with their cats and you know the part of the study was petting your dog also increases your serotonin and dopamine levels in your brain. Petting a cat doesn't do it. I don't know why. Now there's a couple of very important things that people overlook. Dogs see the world visually very much like us. Cats do not. They have a whole different type of eye. If you look at your cat's iris it's very different. It's not round like a dog's. And there was a great show on nature a bazillion years ago, I mean 30 years ago, where they showed like a camera's eye view of the world from like they basically put a GoPro before they were invented on a dog and a cat. And so you saw the dog walking along, you know, two feet from the ground and the things in the neighborhood that you might miss when you're walking your dog. The cat one, I mean, they did such a good job of like blurring and showing multiple images to show what a cat sees because cats eyes are um, adjusted so that they can see a tiny movement of a mouse and then grab it and eat it. So cats see really differently than dogs. And so when you are looking at a dog, it's giving you the feedback that is the kind that you're accustomed to and that you like as a human, whereas a cat looking at you is seeing something very different than what you're seeing when you look back at the cat. So I think that is a big factor in these serotonin and dopamine studies. But like I said, they didn't ask me because I don't have a PhD in cat biology. <sighs> but they should because <laughs> I know a lot. So anyway, I found this study really fascinating, particularly that when you have a dog and a cat, that you are um, way less happy than a person with a cat uh, with just a dog. And part of it is, you know, that idea that cats do decrease your negative emotions, but they don't increase your positive emotions. I think that's a really important finding from this study. And of course, lots of people have a cat too, and they love their cats, and they're like, well, he's sitting on my lap purring. Why is my dopamine not going up? I don't know. Somebody needs to measure that. But I know that, that me and a lot of people that I come in contact with have an incredible, intense bond with their dogs. You cannot even describe the bond people have with their dogs. Um, you know, and when you lose a dog, you really feel how strong that bond was. Sorry, we had a little blip there because somebody decided to call me. See, I'm telling you, my phone's literally blowing up this morning. Um, what was I saying? Uh, cat people. Yeah, I've had lots of cat people who are in great mourning at the loss of a cat. I mean, you know, cats can be like dogs. You can play with them and teach them to come and take them for walks and do everything you do with a dog. Um, but it's, you know, I don't think that's uh, necessarily the norm in the cat community. <laughs> And, you know, sure, we, I mean, I grieve just as much for the loss of a horse or a rabbit as I do for a dog. But certainly when you lose a dog, you can really feel that intensity of that bond you have with the dog. Um, and that's not to say that cat people don't feel the same thing. But, you know, the connection you have with a dog is just so intense. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why this might have happened. 33% um, of the households in America have dogs only, 24% have a dog and a cat, um, and 11% have a cat. This is in this study. 
uh, 39% had no pet, and then there was 4% that had like bunnies and iguanas. Um, so that was the way they broke down the study. And I still can't cat owners. Uh, I don't know what I wrote there. Um, I'm sure cat owners, I don't know what that says, but I'm sure cat owners would report that they feel happiness from their cat. And, you know, I have tons of cat owners I see here and they have an intense bond with their cat. But, you know, they couldn't find that. This study that just came out, you can look it up and read all the information about it, but it won't talk about serotonin and dopamine because that's me um, from another study. Um, I'm sure people, you know, love their animals as much as, you know, a cat, a rabbit, whatever you have. I mean, I met a woman who loved her iguanas the way I love my dog. And that was because she was allergic to all furry things. And I poured all that love on that little scaly thing. And plenty of people in tropical places have, um, iguanas and love them deeply. So, or birds, well, you know, you have birds a long time. <laughs> but I just find it fascinating that uh, people with a dog are happier and report themselves as happy. This study was huge. They had a sample of about 2,000 people, um, and they're touting its research methods as very, very good. So, um, you know, things change. If you know anything about Temple Grandin, she's a woman who is autistic, who has written several great books about animals, and who designed some more humane slaughter facilities, which still are only like 40% of the slaughter facilities in the United States use her methods because we're mean people. <laughs> um, but she, because of her gifts, is able to look at a study and immediately poke holes in it and see what the problems are with the study. So I don't know if we could get her attention to this study, but I'm sure as with every study, no matter how much it's touted as perfectly scientific evidence, <laughs> there's always a problem. One of the things I remember she wrote about was testing horses for intelligence with some kind of study in their stall with pictures they had to do something with. And the horses actually, she said, all right, let's do this with toddlers. So they took some four-year-olds and gave them the same test. They failed it way more than the horses. And it was something that they had devised to say that uh, horses are stupid. <laughs> and here we are, cats, I mean, uh, kids are uh, dumber than horses, according to the study redone. Dogs do make us happier. Well, I don't know. I don't have a cat. I had a cat for a short time, and I got to tell you, um, and this may be a factor too, that cat kept me up at night. I could not get good sleep with that cat. They're very nocturnal animals, and she was knocking stuff around, and then even if she was quiet, she was using the litter box, which was, um, let's say, unhideable, so the fragrance would float up through the whole house, and the stink would wake me up. And I wasn't feeding her that bad. Of course, if I fed her better, it might not be so bad. But, you know, that, that being awake at night definitely is a factor in depression, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, headaches, um, and years, all kinds of stuff um, you can get because of lack of sleep. So if your cat's bashing around the house in the middle of the night, you might not be happy just because you're not getting any sleep. So um, the moral of the story of the study is if you want to be happier, get a dog. And it didn't matter if you had one dog or three dogs, you were still much happier than the other people. So, and they were surprised. This is not what they were researching. They were just looking at comparisons. Um, and they were surprised that this was one of the major findings of the study was that dogs make us happier. And I'm not surprised because my dog makes me very happy. Don't you little biscuit. So thanks for joining us today. Cat people out there, forgive us. We've got to find a way to get a study to show that cats increase serotonin in people because they really do. Um, it's just a matter of finding a way to study it. Is it when you're playing with the cat? Is it when he's purring on your lap and you're petting him? Um, I do, they did the gaze study. That didn't work out. But these studies, the gaze study was a pretty small number. Um, and they might not have, you know, they might be, they want to pick random people. But if we get a cat person who does all the things that we do with dogs with their cat, takes them for walks, teaches them tricks, has them come, lay down, all that stuff, that cat person may be very different than somebody whose cat's just wandering around the house getting in trouble. So I think we need to revisit some of these studies. Cat people demand justice. <laughs> I know my niece's cat, Edward. He is like a dog. He's very snuggly um, and makes her really happy. And I'm sure she feels just as comforted by him, although he weighs 12 pounds and her dog weighs 100 pounds. All right.
right, you guys, I'm gonna try to be here tomorrow, but my yard guy is screwing me up. I don't know if I can do this tomorrow because I think I'm gonna to have to be out there at the crack of dawn doing yard work. Um, if I do do it, it will probably be around nine. So thanks for joining us, everybody. Have a great day. Uh, Danny, sorry about the 25 inches of snow. Good thing is maybe it'll melt faster than it would have in January. <laughs> Stay safe. There were tons of accidents in, North, uh, in South Dakota. They were showing it on the Weather Channel, just like people sliding on it. It was awful. All right. We'll see you guys certainly on Sunday and maybe tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.